I've compared and ranked six of the top AI assistants for web development, and we'll find out which one or combination of them is the right one for you in 2024. All right, coming in at number six is Tab9. It's been around for a while, I think actually longer than GitHub Copilot. And the first way they're going to evaluate all of these is its ability to explain code. Now, here we have a React component. It has a subtle bug in it. We want to see if it can pick up the fact that we are sorting the array of names in place. And unfortunately, it can't. So Tab9 fails this test. It doesn't warn us that we are mutating this array of names. Now, if you don't know about this bug, I don't blame you. It's actually pretty subtle. What we're doing here is we're mutating this property, names, because when you hit do dot sort, you're actually changing the array in place. Now, to fix this, you can just clone the array and sort that, or you could use the new to sorted to actually just create a new array without mutating the original array. What we expect from our AIs is to tell us this sort of stuff. So in this case, tab nine didn't, and it failed. Now, the next two tests are for code completion. First, we want to see if it actually generates this sort bug in the first place, which it does. So unfortunately, it doesn't actually give us the right code. Instead of cloning the array or doing two sorted, it just does a sort in place, and that's not what we want. Now, the next test evaluates its ability to create a large volume of code. We have a GraphQL server in this monorepo, and we're going to ask it to give us a query for the top 10 Pokemon. And I was really excited about tab nine's ability to do this because it has a slash workspace option. I thought it was going to nail it. It didn't. It just hallucinated a GraphQL query and then gave us an excuse at the end that it needs to be synchronized with whatever the schema is of your GraphQL query. And then finally, we asked the AI to generate some tests. And unfortunately, tab nine fails on this one too. Tab nine just went on and on and on with all kinds of tests, never finished. And I finally ended up just hitting stop. So unfortunately, we didn't even get any tests out of it. Let's go on to number five. And five is Duet from Google. Now, this one requires you to have a Google Cloud project that you connect to. I'm not sure why that's the case. Let's take a look at its ability to explain code. Did a pretty good job explaining code. Unfortunately, it too did not find the subtle bug. When it comes to sorting, it just went with a sort option. So it failed that test as well. When it came to GraphQL, I thought connecting it with my Google Cloud project was going to work. Unfortunately not, didn't find the great GraphQL, and it just hallucinated the GraphQL. But it did come up with some great tests, so it passed that test. Awesome. Coming in at number four is Code Whisperer from AWS. Now, it actually did a great job explaining the code, and it told us about the mutation on the sort, so that's great. Passed that test. It also passed completing the right code. It did the clone. Unfortunately, it also failed the GraphQL generation test and it hallucinated the GraphQL. I was kind of surprised by that too because this one requires you to connect to an AWS build instance. I guess that's not out of the project either. So yeah, it failed that one too. Weirdly, it fails on generating unit tests. I asked it to generate unit tests and it tells me which tests I should write. No, man, that's why I have you installed. You write the tests. Moving on to number three, JetBrains. Now we're going to switch over to WebStorm for this because that JetBrains AI isn't available in VS Code. Aww. It did a great job explaining the code and it found that mutation. Awesome. Unfortunately, when it came to completing the code, it just completed to a sort. In fact, actually, it's a little bit awkward in terms of doing its code completion. You have to hit a return and you kind of wait for it. Found the whole completion a little bit less than fluid. When it came to GQL, I was super stoked because we're opening a project in WebStorm. You would figure it would find the GraphQL schema, and it didn't. So it just failed on that one, again, hallucinating the schema and giving some excuse about how do you have to go and synchronize it with the GraphQL schema yourself. And then when it came to test it, it did a great job creating the unit test for this React component. Now, clocking in at number two is Cody from Sourcegraph. Unfortunately, it didn't do a very good job explaining. Actually, the exp explanation itself was kind of munged, and it didn't find the mutation in the sort, so it failed the explain test. When it came to completion, it just used sort as opposed to two sorted or doing a clone. But it was the only AI to pass the GraphQL test. Thank you! And that's because Sourcegraph actually looks at your entire project and yes, it can go and find that GraphQL query. You can see it in the context. It goes and completes it, and that makes it outstanding in my view. It also did a great job creating the unit tests, and I would say overall it has a very intuitive UI, so I'm very pleased with Cody. And coming in at number one is GitHub Copilot. It did a fantastic job explaining the code, 
did an excellent job generating the right code in the first place when it came to the sort. Unfortunately, it didn't find the GraphQL. That's because it only looks at a single file for context, and it did a great job generating the test. So for me, that makes GitHub Copilot number one. Now you can use whatever you want to. My choice is to use a combination of GitHub Copilot for completion and then Cody for doing any kind of chat stuff. And you can do that because you can tell Cody what parts you actually want and you can tell it to turn off its completion. So you can completion from GitHub and then the chat from Cody. But I'd love to hear from you, which AI or set of AIs are you gonna use in your coding? Be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And while you're having a look around, be sure to go to pronextjs.dev. That's my beginner to advanced course on Next.js. It'll be coming out in the next year. Super excited about that, working on that right now. Of course, in the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button, it helps me out a lot. And of course, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more videos like this in 2024 and beyond.